Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Last time we exercised our demons and put Fantima out of her misery. I mean, that sounds a little aggressive, but whatever. We, we are the star of the show, so we can say whatever we want. So moving on. We'll be greeted instantly again by Cynthia. So her grandma passed along our Diligent deeds stopping that terrorist. You can never trust him, Cynthia. Those cult leaders, they're hmm, a little interesting. People thinking that they are aliens and they're going to go on spaceships and travel to faraway lands. Hmm. Yes. So they're all about that energy. Trying to figure out what that's all about. So, we're apparently going to go and visit our local library, find out about what these ruins were all about. A little bit of a plot device, we couldn't have figured this out ourselves, so instead, with Cynthia's help, we'll be on our way. So, there you go, we're headed to Canalave City, but we can't do it on our own. We're going to need some help, so we're going to fly all the way. As you can see here, it's just west of Jubilee, so we'll do that. Making this easy on ourselves. It's kind of fast traveling. I guess that's what you could think of fly ads, but and I'm kind of hot and cold about fast traveling. I think that it's obviously a quality of life thing that is is beneficial to making the game less arduous. It doesn't make it quite as annoying as having to go all the way back to certain places and you know, essentially hoof it to get there. That's kind of annoying. But in certain games like this, I don't know if it's as big of a deal. It just depends upon how large the game is. That's kind of a factor, I suppose. But before we do any of that, we need to get back into getting our team together because I kind of split everybody up a little bit. So Miguel, Charlie, and Buster are going to be taking a seat for at least the short foreseeable future. They've got a bit of an advantage having participated in that gym, just the three of them. They got an entire extra two trainers worth of experience because I goofed and I didn't realize that there was more math to do. Whoops. But that's okay. And Steven's doing okay as well. So we'll just go ahead and let them hang out in the old box. Everybody likes a nice box. And we'll be heading west. It wasn't really accessible earlier. Actually, I don't think you can come this way. Hello, officer? Okay, so we're heading to the old fishing hole, the old fishing hole. Make sure you got your bait and tackle box, everybody. There's going to be a lot of surfing in this episode, so hopefully you guys love that. Would love to surf. It looks like Bieberl is coming back again. Justin Bieberl. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. That's a nice little... It used to be... In, in different games, it, it would always be something different. There's always like, you know, it's like Lapras or just a, I guess a generic blob water type Pokemon in previous installments. If you had Surfing Pikachu, I believe in yellow, you could use him or her to swim around. That's fun, isn't it? Can I not talk to you? Hello. Excuse me. Oh, so I have to get on land to fight you. I can't fight you from the water. That would be cool. Imagine trying to do a Pokemon battle off of Beebrill's back. That'd be pretty neat. But yeah, back to fast traveling. There's certain games where it does make sense to have fast traveling if it's like a massive landscape, but it depends upon when it's being introduced as well. I feel like if it gets introduced too early, then sometimes it can be a bit of a crutch. Like the thing that comes to mind and like this is just me personally, I potentially just ruined the game for myself. I wouldn't say, okay, maybe ruined is a bit harsh, but I definitely curbed my exploration. I played Horizon Zero Dawn when it came out. Or, no, I did not want to play it when it came out. I can't even talk today. I played Horizon Zero Dawn when it when they made the DLC for it, and I found out about it. And I added that to my uh, the old PlayStations and my Playbox. And that game gives you... It's a huge map. It's one of those open world games, and it gave you the ability to fast travel between these campfires pretty early, which is nice. But also at the same time, 
it did make me less inclined to explore. So that's kind of a bit of a bummer. Obviously, you don't have to explore in games. If that's not what you're into, then you don't do it. But in general, you know, they have these kind of robust, diverse areas that you can go and explore. And I kind of ruined it for myself initially because I didn't do that. I was more content with just finding different points on the map and then just going in and placing a little marker and then just traveling back and forth between all those. That's kind of what I did. And that's kind of, I don't know. I mean, that's that's a fine way to play, I guess, but it's not really the most ideal way to play. I need to get some Thunderbolt TMs and nuke these Gyarados. But yeah, and, and I mean, the inception of... Wah, the inception of Pokemon having something like that, it's been around for a long time. As far as I can remember, you know, fly has always been a thing. So you've always been able to fast travel. I guess there's not really a ton of reason to, to really go back and forth with the exploration once you get to a certain level. There's no real reason to do it. This game does kind of love backtracking, though, which is a little strange. I feel like the pacing of this game, especially from this point forward, is a little, a little odd. I mean, the pacing of this game in general is odd, but you know, you you spend all this time trying to go on this journey and then abruptly it's like, hey, do you want to go fight this gym leader in a city you've already been to that you should have been able to fight when you went to that place the first time? I'm not entirely sure what the goal is. I mean, realistically, being honest, it's padding. You know, it forces you to go back and forth to all these places. And I guess it's kind of okay in the sense that you don't want games to be super linear. Pokemon games are have almost always been linear. But there's also the element of doing what you want to do making sense in the moment. Like I don't need I don't need the games to necessarily be super open. Like I don't need them to let me have all the choices in the world, but going back and forth where you, you're following essentially the story of the game, talking about this ancient village, you're trying to chase down this galactic grunt, and then out of nowhere they're like, hey, how about you go and fight a gym leader? It makes sense in like, I don't know, the grand scheme of going back and doing it, but then it, it doesn't really make a ton of sense because you should have been able to do that the first trip to Hearth Home. That's just my personal opinion. And you can do that in Platinum. You have the option, I think, between... I, I'm going to get this wrong every time. But between gyms 3, 4, and 5, I believe those ones, you can do it in any order you want to. It's wide open, and I think that that's, that's great. I'm, I'm just going to keep hyping up Platinum forever just because I'm salty about the fact that they didn't include all the cool stuff that it added, and I'm a little bummed about that. I mean, the games have been out for... 15 plus years you would have figured that at some point they would get their acts together and give give you all the goodies but you know maybe there's going to become a, a pokemon i don't know lustrous platinum or something crazy like that i have no idea i'm starting to think that that's not really going to be the case anymore i believe that going forward with these games they're probably just going to stick to the duos because i don't really know if there's necessarily a market for there being three Pokemon games anymore in, in the installments. Also, it's more for them to work on. So, what they could potentially provide now as DLC would have been that third game back in the day. So, like, your... your Emeralds, your Platinums, your Crystals, like, that was your DLC. You're essentially getting... I mean, it's actually better than that, because you're getting the whole game presented to you in a polished and slightly better format. Whereas now, they don't really do that anymore. There's no real reason for them to do that anymore because they can just give you patches, which is fine. I mean, it's just a bit of a bummer that that's the approach that they're taking. Um, takedown seems okay. We'll, we don't need wing attack and aerial ace. We'll just go with aerial ace. It's the better of the two. Never misses. Just like me, I never make mistakes when I play, so definitely ideal. But yeah, in general, it just, it just feels like there's so much that is made for the quality of life in good ways, but then there isn't as much... Some some games, I don't want to say all games because that's, that's a generalization, but it seems like some games, especially when made by bigger studios, 
there's more of an emphasis on the the flash and dance than there is about maybe paying attention to detail which is a bit of a bummer there are some games though that actually do put a lot of effort into that attention to detail especially if they're trying something new which i'm really impressed by but you know you've got situations like this where i know that this game was made it was outsourced to a third-party studio working alongside game freak so it wasn't done by game freak in-house but you would think that for a company that's valued at like 200 billion dollars that they could give you a little bit more i mean the game itself is very true to the originals which is nice because you do want that you want to have a game that if they're going to remaster it that it gives you at least the original content now i'm not some sort of gaming official i couldn't tell you i don't know all the rules you know there's probably plenty of people being like well that's not actually how games work and i would be willing to say you're right because i don't know everything also that shadow changing looked horrible but you would just think that given the nature of this type of of a game like if they're going to go back and use the intellectual property they already have also how are we standing on this water is it that shallow are we jesus cristo if you have the intellectual property already that you can go and make it over again you know in the case of these studios i think it was like elka who made it i'm not sure if that's the correct name also i didn't read shadow claw so let me do this real quick shadow claw User slashes with a sharp claw made from shadows. Critical hits land more easily. That's a very good move. And it may become something we use. Where are those gosh dang super repels? There they are. I bought a bunch for a reason. But yeah, there's just the, you know, you would think that if you have all this time and all this money that, and you already have the source material, you're not making something new that you could do more with it. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just being picky. I have no idea. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but I just know I've said it probably for like three episodes in a row, just that there's a lot more content out there that they had that they chose not to use. And it makes me wonder why. Is it one of those things where they don't feel like they have to anymore? Like the experience is already, you know, like, well, we're already giving you the original experience. You know, this is the diamond and pearl that you got with just some quality of life stuff. Is that not good enough for you? Stop your complaining. And I mean, I guess it's kind of neat in general, having the option for this guy doesn't have eyebrows. Um, that always throws me off unless he has like very light eyebrows and they just didn't know how to code them. But then again, in this game, I'm not giving them any credit for eyebrows. They did a horrible job with eyebrows, especially the overworld sprites. My goodness, just slap some JPEGs on them. But it is nice that you have an entire generation now of people who probably weren't alive the first time, or at least old enough to understand, besides just mashing buttons, to have the experience of playing these games, which I think is great. It, It's the... I guess it's the closest thing that you can get to going back and just enjoying the original media, because some people don't have copies of it. It's a lot harder nowadays to get a hold of physical media so if you don't have a DS, if you don't have, ooh, this is going to be a bad matchup. If you don't have the DS, if you don't have the the cart of Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, etc., you're not playing this game. That's just how it is. I mean, I guess you could emulate it, but those are hit or miss. And like, how many people are emulating games with their kids? Like, hey, you want to sit on the couch and emulate some games today? Like, that's probably not happening. It might. And if you do, that's awesome. Good for you. But, all right. So there you go, Mr. N Mr. No Eyebrows with his... Gibson SG. That's a cool looking guitar, though. I like it. I would take it if I knew how to play. I don't. Ooh, this guy can't find his girlfriend. She goes to a different school. But, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe studios now realize that they are at a certain point where they don't have to provide a different type of experience. Ooh, there's a new Pokemon. Mantine from, uh, I want to say Gold and Silver or Ruby Sapphire. This is the, uh, pre-evolution of it, man, Tyke. Cute name. Very clever. Looks like a gosh dang stingray. Did that not... Excuse me. That was not super effective? What? Huh. Well, I don't know what that's all about. But, uh, how about another Giga Drain? Please don't hurt yourself, Bart, please. Great. 
You were awaiting directions, but you didn't listen carefully. But I think it's nice that there's there are games now that when they're they're talked about, it's it's a nice kind of psychological thing for the original people who played them, as well as the maybe the next generation of people who will play them, or like the generation after that, getting a chance to share that. Because I've always thought that like if I was to bring more D mics into the world, that that's something that I would want to do is to be able to have those shared experiences. Now, I, I'm not sure like if this is the school of thought that I want to subscribe to, but I like the idea that to be able to play the original stuff with, you know, a kiddo. I share things with my nieces and nephews, which is fun, but they're not quite old enough to really understand yet. So they're getting there. One of them is, but the gaming phase is only so long, everybody, so take advantage of it unless they really gravitate towards what you're doing. You know, at the end of the day, make your kids do what you, what you want them to do, because you created them and you can choose their entire lives forever. So playing a game that you played as a kid and then being able to play a more updated, modern version of it is really cool. I like the idea of that. I think it's... It is a way to kind of tie things together because you can be like, oh, well, back in my day, we had blah, 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 blah. And that makes everybody upset. Nobody wants to hear your the good old days story. Nobody wants that. That's that's dumb. So this is kind of a way to be like, oh, well, back in my day. But you can like, I don't know. I guess you could still take that approach. But like, oh, well, back in my day, we didn't have experience all and we did things the hard way. We went to school uphill both ways and blah, blah, blah. We had to write in our own blood and stuff like that. Like, whatever you're into. But, in general. Also, don't forget to come over here. This is a little sneaky snake. Rare candy? That's fun. Yeah, it's just... I don't know. So, for some people, it's just like, where do you get off? Also, did I talk to this person? Is this this guy's girlfriend? She's stuck. Oh, well, if you come back, you can get some spark stickers for your balls. Great. <laughs> what did she say? Okay, oh, she has a wingle. I didn't even see it. She doesn't mind waiting alone for her boyfriend. Okay. Well, that's questionable. You and Stranger Danger, girl. You need to have a friend. There's power in numbers. All right, I don't think we need a repel. I was actually hoping I would run into an encounter there to make myself look stupid. But anyway, heading west gets us to Cantalave City. And some time with a nerd. Okay. Of course I'm puzzled. We've only met Don's father once, so now we'll have another experience again. Great. So we're gonna get our Pokedex, Pokedex upgraded. We're gonna hand it over. Sounds like he's, uh... Really knows what he's doing. Okay. What is happening right now? This guy must be middle management. He's got some job security. He clearly doesn't know what he's doing. Okay. This person is thirsty. I don't know if... Maybe this is like the... A throwback to the original games where... You can give, uh... You have to go give them a drink. Some tea. And they'll let you go between these little outposts. Maybe if you give them a... A soda. A water. Maybe a lemon... Lemonade. All we have is milk, so... But, uh, let's just take a moment and enjoy this beautiful music. So I'll hush. Yeah, Cantalave is great. It's probably one of my favorite tracks in the game. Ooh, the move the leader is in this area. That's cool. Let's go ahead and explore Cantalave while we have before we have to go to the boring library. Ugh. Great. Thank you for explaining how geography works. I'm not in, okay, it says that it was like mixed in with cargo. Like, did this person steal these? Okay, so that's skill swap. Let's check out what that is for a moment. The user employs its psychic power to exchange abilities with the target. That's very situational. What's on TV? You've just tuned into the Underground Treasures Corner. I actually clicked this because I saw the Team Galactic logo, but... Hope you're digging this. I like that. Oh, they're profiling us. I don't remember us being interviewed. 
Okay. Well... <laughs> what has happened? Okay. Thanks for dunking on us because we haven't spent a lot of time underground game. Show us where your priorities are. That was kind of rude. Maybe I don't want to go underground. Maybe it's scaly. Anyway. So this is the move deleter. If you put a move on it that you didn't like, you can go ahead and have him get rid of those. It was more prevalent back when HMs were a thing because you couldn't get rid of those without having the move deleter. They were just stuck on your Pokemon forever. And it was kind of annoying. Some of the TMs are fine. You know, Fly, Surf, maybe even Strength, Waterfall in, in these games, but... Actually, I don't think Waterfall's in this game, but... Um, yeah, they they were situational. Like, if you got stuck with, like, Flash or Cut, Rock Smash, not the greatest. And it was just kind of like, eh, whatever. The Harbor Inn, the text is too faded to read. Can we go in? We cannot. Give you a little bit of a clue. That might be a... Uh, an exclusive thing we'll do later. I don't know if I'm even capable of doing it. I've used that area in the original games because I did a little bit of hack a ruin, but you know. There's a gym in this city too. So we're gonna go ahead and fight Barry. We're not gonna do the the gym in this episode because we just did one, and that's a little bit too much gymming. We got enough dopamine from our last experience. Hitting the plates. Ooh, this is a horrible matchup. Oops. Forgot that I had Bart out there. I wasn't expecting there to be a berry fight. This is not very good for me. That's okay. We'll try to mix it up a little bit. We've got some Pokemon that are pretty close to evolving. And like I said, I still have... I still have a couple Pokemon on my team specifically that I can't do anything with yet. They require stones. They need to be stoned before they can evolve, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Also, this Staravia is getting on my heckin' nerves. Oh my goodness. But yeah. I think Candelave is a really cool place. The gym battle in it is pretty interesting. I like that they mixed up some of the, the typings in this game. They decided to bring some of the ones that, you know, they added new types in gold and silver, and while they did have the steel fight with Jasmine, which is okay, I guess. It's not really like, they just kind of seem like, hey, we have a new type here. We're just gonna sort of give attention to this. They, they it was just kind of like glossed over a little bit. And then they didn't put any sort of a dark trainer in that game. They didn't put a dark trainer in Ruby and Sapphire or like a dark gym. I guess there isn't really one in here either. I don't even know when the first Dark gym is that it happens. I want to say like, is it? Oof, is it Sword and Shield? It might be. Black and white. I don't know. I haven't really. I played most of the games, but I just don't remember. Maybe there was one in X and Y or something that I'm forgetting. But yeah, they have all these new types, and there's like, eh, whatever. We don't really need to to, to prioritize though. Ooh, here's one of my favorite Pokemon. Here it is. Heracross. Heracross is. An OG from the from the gold and silver days and does a, a, a whopper when it comes to damage. My goodness. Jeez. That was a heavy hit. It's one of those bug Pokemon that is very good and... What is this? Like Recover? Is that what this is? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I feel like using a... I haven't been using growth either. So I guess like setting up having growth and this would be nice, but I can't buy more flash. I don't really need that currently. Nah, I'm just, mm, so conflicted. There's so many grass moves that I have on this. Nah, I'm gonna hold off for now. I don't really need a recover move. We got plenty of mulk for that. We're doing okay. But uh, yeah, what was I saying? The, the use of Heracross in gold and silver was awesome because both Pokemon in red and blue were just not it. Like the best one that was around was like Pinsir and Scyther, but their move pools were horrible. They didn't really use them at all. And then like the best early one you can get is Beedrill, but its stats are just horrible. It's fast, which is cool, but there weren't really any bug moves. So they've kind of worked around by like having like X-Scissor and 
bug buzz and U-turn and stuff like that. Struggle bug. So they've they've really they've changed it up with the bug types, which is nice. There's more variety if that's what you're into. They're not quite just like throwaway Pokemon anymore. And Heracross kind of paved the way for it. It's the OG. I mean, Scyther and Pinsir are great, but Heracross definitely is awesome. And like Pinsir does not get to evolve. It doesn't really need to. Its stats are great, which is kind of surprising. But yeah, it's like a Hercules Beetle. You can catch it by shaking trees in gold and silver, which was kind of a weird mechanic. You had to use your head, headbutt those trees. It's a it's a good time, but it's it's move pool in that game wasn't great. Holy smokes, he has a level 37 Pokemon. Barry, evolve your print plot. What are you doing? Napoleon's just around the corner. Taking your sweet time, huh? This episode is probably going to be on the shorter side just because the most recent episodes have all been feature-length films. My goodness. I could edit some of this stuff down, but then also part of it's like, it's not quite as... There's not a lot of filler that I'm doing that really necessitates it. I usually try to curate my content so that way it's not going to be a waste. Also, cute berry angry face. Don't we love it? We do. There we go. Speaking of evolutions, Sharon is ready to ascend to the final level of government dronedom. Very nice. So no longer will we have a Staravia. Instead, we have a Staraptor. Yay! For the longest time, I thought that the like the horn or whatever that is on the top of its head, that red part, was like its head, and I could never see its eyes. Yeah, I wasn't the brightest. But that's okay. So here we go, Star Raptor, the Predator Pokemon. Uh oh. You don't want to be a predator. It's how you wind up on a list. It has a savage nature. It will courageously challenge foes that are much larger than itself. Okay. So Sharon, she's a fighter. Close combat is a cool move. But you gotta make sure that when you use it, that it comes at a cost. So let's go ahead and get rid of Quick Attack. We don't really have much of a need for that. So Sharon, shaping up to be pretty decent, all in one episode. An evolution and a cool move. So good for you, Sharon. Good for you. Be a Sharon, not a Karen. So Barry wants us to fight the gym leader. We will, eventually. But we're still good. We've still got a little bit of time left to explore this area. So we're gonna do that. Talk to all five people that live in this huge area. This is a pretty cool area. I don't know, is there supposed to be a boat here? Where is it? I don't see any boats. Where the boat's at? I love, oh, okay. Empty house, great. Clearly this game is very thoughtful. There it is, there's a boat. Iron Island. They turn, oh, this is where, this is where they get swole, huh? Sailor Eldridge's house? Secret path somewhere in the city and there's treasure. Ooh. Oh, I like the sound of that. How do I get to it? Now I want it real bad. Is there, is there a secret path? I'm not sure you're supposed to find this out. Is it back here? Oh man, game, wait, 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 wait. Do I see something back here? That's like a wall, that's not helpful. I can see, oh, that is the wall. I thought it was a path, I got super excited. I'm not the, I'm not using all my two brain cells today. We're not doing, we're not doing the greatest. How on earth do you get to that? I have no idea. I'll come back to it another time and figure that out. Can we go to, can we even go to this fabled Iron Island? Ooh, we can. Okay, we'll save that for the next episode. We'll do the gym and we'll do the Iron Island. We'll talk to Sailor Eldritch's child. Ooh, this the gym in this city is very pretty cool. We'll wrap it up with some book learning. Let's go check out that library like Cynthia told us to do. I guess we'll do it. There's cool things at your library. Having fun isn't hard when you've got a library card. Do we have to pay? Oh, keep keep quiet or else. Library is a pretty serious business. Yeah, also leave people alone when they're in public spaces. Like, why is there such an insistence on like, people always wanting to do things like, when well, they have to get your attention or try to troll you when you're just trying to read a book or watch a movie, enjoy a hot cup of joe. Also, when you're in libraries or like, places that are meant to be quiet, like just hush your gosh dang mouth. Be quiet. 
Nobody wants to hear what you're listening to on your speakerphone or your on your laptops. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. That's the definitive truth. Well, you gotta put in a request, bud. Do they only have one copy of the book you wanna read? That's a little bit too eccentric for for my beliefs of libraries. You can slow your roll, lady. So we're gonna read the Sinnoh myth. Is this a poem? Okay, great. That means nothing to me. Sinnoh's re Sinnoh region's mythology. I would love to read it. They led separate lives, but uh, we just hadn't figured out how to enslave them yet. So <laughs> there we go. It's weird though that it's like, like that they're like subservient. There's no autonomy with Pokemon, but it's like, it makes you think of if you've watched the first Pokemon movie, like Mewtwo being created as like a genetic experiment in a science lab. And it wants to have that autonomy to like, take Pokemon away from humans. So I don't know. So we're learning about those three Pokemon that were up on that, uh, on that wall in Celestic Town. This is pretty neat. Maybe we'll run into them another day. Failstone's myth, ooh, what's this about? Okay, what? I have no idea what this is talking about. Okay, there's more, but wait, there's more. You found the sword. This sounds so intense. Gorged with power. Okay, this mythos is very strange. I have no idea what that's talking about. I literally don't know. Is, is that a Pokemon it's referring to? Sinopho- oh my gosh, there's just so much reading. I don't think that's how that works. I don't think if you put bones in water that it just... reincarnates a Pokemon. What on earth is this fever dream of writing here? Is this fiction? Non-fiction? Am I lost? Okay. Can they sit at tables? What on earth is happening? I mean, I'm assuming they're talking about evolution and like humans and the ancestors of humans and the ancestors of Pokemons being, you know, more akin to each other. But I don't know if there's any, what, what lore there is of that. Oh my gosh. What it, what is happening right now? This is the craziest stuff. Like, I don't know if I ever read this as a kid. Okay, so the egg did come before the chicken. Problem solved. I'm assuming this is referring to Arceus and the two beings being potentially the Pokemon on the front of these games. Then it created three more beings. This, yeah, this is, this is something heavy. My goodness. I don't know if this is when I was supposed to come here. Maybe this is like a thing where you'll have, you'll have to come back. I just wasted everybody's time visiting this gosh dang library. I don't know. It was a good read though, right? You learned something, I think. Learned how insane all that was. Am I healed? No. So we will do that. I wanted to get a good peek at that boat though. Isn't that nice? Look at that nice little boat. That's a good time. Don't you love a nice adventure out on the sea? People are gonna be like thinking like, hey, you're just looking at that for a thumbnail. No, maybe. Some of these episodes, it's a little harder to pull thumbnails than others just because the things that I do in it, it's literally just battling. And it's like, hey, how do I show that? Like, hey, I fought 800 people today. And most of them are just like, hey, 
Camper Judith and Picnicker Eugene. Like, great. That's exciting, isn't it? But anyway, we made it to the Canalave Gym. The man with the steel body. I wonder what type of Pokemon they'll have here. But we'll find out next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. And I'll see you next time. Bye.